Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to part four of building a wireless sensor network with the NRF24L01. And I'm excited for part four. In part three, we got into the software. In part four, we're going to get into the hardware or more importantly, the close to final schematic as well as the PCB design. And of course, everything I go over today, I'll post on Eagle GitHub if you want to uh, leverage it. So let's get started. So first, let me start with some updates. And once again, the great thing about this series is I'm getting great comments and user feedback, and it's allowing me to improve the design both from a software and a hardware standpoint. So please keep those comments coming in the comment section. Couple notes, uh, a great input was on using VCC, which is the battery voltage, and using the 1.1 volt internal reference and how to use them together to calculate the battery voltage so we don't need to do the voltage divider. And I'll talk about that. Another good input was using the macro F, I'll just call it capital F function. And that basically tells the compiler to save certain strings, in our case, to SRAM rather than in the dynamic global variable memory which was starting to get filled because of all the strings I was using in the settings menu. Okay, and those are kind of software updates, although the first one's sort of software and hardware, but for some of the hardware updates, some decisions I made. So the whole idea is this is meant to be sort of a reference design or a platform for you to use and modify for your own application, for it to fit a lot of needs for different people, and also you know, I'm going to provide everything for someone to build up, but I'll also sell this on my in my store. So a great platform to sell that's flexible for a lot of users. So I made a couple decisions on the hardware. For the PCB design, instead of just having a battery input, I'm going to have a battery input as well as an AC power input. So the idea is you could plug a power supply into a DC jack, and I'll have a voltage regulator on there, and that allows you to power from AC line power or from battery power depending if you're doing some testing or if you want to use it as a router or an end device. The other thing I decided was flexibility in the temperature measurement. I talked about three different temperature sensors. You know, I ended up going with the STTT uh, S751 uh, from ST Micro because it could handle the low voltages. But I had someone also mention that you know they shared a good lithium polymer battery that you could use that keeps you above three volts. So that makes the DS18B20 a viable temperature sensor. And then of course I've been using the TMP36 because that's what I have on hand. So what I decided was, well, why don't I just build a footprint on the PCB for all three? And in fact, I can leverage the same footprint for the TMP36 as well as the DS18B20. So once again, flexibility was the key for those two hardware decisions. A couple quick notes on the, the VCC and the 1.1 volt internal reference. So you can see who suggested it. You can see their YouTube name, so thank you to them. But they actually pointed me to another site, which I'll, I'll point you to when I show you the code. But basically it shows how you basically can go from, we've been using the internal reference as our standard our measurement standard but what happens is if you could turn around and use vcc to measure 1.1 or i shouldn't say 1.1 the internal reference voltage and actually use that known reference voltage to calculate what vcc is and remember the whole issue here is vcc may be a battery so we don't it won't be constant so we don't know what it is but this method which you can do in the 328p allows you to calculate it and this allows us to eliminate the voltage divider. It also frees up an ADC pin, so we have more ADC pins to go around. And I've already mentioned this. Uh, thank you again to the person who suggested it. There's their name. But it basically reduces the amount of dynamic memory we use if we put in strings. So let me quick show you the just the function for the, the VCC and the 1.1 volt uh, for calculating the battery voltage. And of course, I'll update the code and this will be on the GitHub site. Okay, so here's a function I added and I changed some of the code around, but basically what I do is I change the analog reference to external because now we're gonna use VCC as our measurement reference, AVCC input. I burn eight readings because whenever you change it, you wanna burn the first couple readings. 
And once again, this code is leveraged from this link right here. So this was a great tutorial for whoever made that. We I appreciate it. I'm not going to go into what these registers do. You can look on this, this link. But basically, you change some settings in the MUX, in the ADC MUX, I should say. You delay a little bit. You then are using registers to set up an ADC measurement. This whole wild loop is basically waiting for the ADC measurement to finish. You grab the results from the from the register, and there's a low and a high because the registers can only hold eight bits. So you take both of them and put them into the same answer to get a full integer value. I then convert it, and basically this conversion is based off of the fact that I know what the reference voltage is. I know what I'm measuring. I just don't know what my reference is. I hope that wasn't too confusing. So I use that to back calculate what the battery voltage is. And then I change back to my analog reference back to internal because that's what we want to use for our other measurements. I burn eight readings. I then return that and then I can pass it to this function below here. So that's how it works. I recommend checking out this link, this tutorial for more information. Okay, let's get into the schematic in Eagle. So for this, I'm using Eagle. Eagle is free to hobbyists, as I mentioned, I think, in part one. So you can download the free light version. It's called a light version. For hobbyists, it's, it's free to use. And I'm not going to go into a tutorial or how to use Eagle. There's plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube, everywhere, on how to use Eagle. What I'm going to go into is just the schematic. Assume the user has a basic understanding of Eagle. I will post my Eagle files on GitHub so you can leverage them and, and create the PCB yourself if you want to get it made up. So what we're looking at here is the schematic, and you build a schematic in Eagle. Here is my Atmega328P. Here is my NRF24 module. Here is the STT uh, S751 temperature sensor. And then here is the footprint for my other temperature sensors. So what I did is I, I am using a footprint for both temperature sensors. Here we can either put the DS temperature sensor or the TMP36. And I'm going to wire them. This is sort of a change from what I've been doing in my prototyping, but I'm wiring it to analog pin 0. I then have the rest of the analog pins open, and I create a header for those so you can access them. This communicates over a digital signal, so I have this routed to... What do I have it routed to? Oh, I have it routed to A4 and A5 because that is the I squared C pins. And so what I do for this though is in case you're not using this temperature sensor is I put jumpers in. So if you're not using it, you can still access analog pin four and five from these jumper pins. I even do the same thing for the NRF24. I have jumper pins in there in case you wanna wire things differently or you don't want to use that, I don't know why, but uh, you can access those pins. And that's basically then what I do for all the empty pins is I give access to them so you can access them from the board for prototyping and for your design. Another thing I'll mention is this header up here basically serves as our programming header. So we can hook an FTDI or USB to serial converter board here to basically program using the Arduino IDE. Here's my reset. Here's my clock. Here is access to VCC as well as the A reference pin so we can check what our what the ADC reference is. Here down here is where I set up my power input. So here is the DC input jack. So if we want to power power it off of line power we can use a wall wart, and just like Arduino, I'm using the same size jack. We can plug into it. I have an LM317, which is a linear voltage regulator. It's going to basically output 3.3 volts. I actually have a tutorial on uh, the LM317. If you want to check that out, I have that on my YouTube channel. It's a very popular linear voltage regulator. If you don't know what a voltage regulator is, I recommend you check out th that tutorial. These resistors basically set up the output value for 3.3 volts. I set up a jumper 
which allows you to choose between this or the input battery. So these pins up represent the battery input. Also, I'll mention real quick here, these are basically sort of a solderless, a pseudo solderless breadboard thing that I'm setting up. And that's why you see that just connected pins connected to themselves and not actually connected to the design itself. So with that said, let's go into the, the board layout, which I'll cover briefly. So here is the board layout. So we saw all the different parts. Now I had to take them out from the schematic and we actually lay out the physical parts on the PCB board. So let me uh, do this real quick. I'm gonna hit this so we can see the ground plane. So basically you cover the, the PCB board in ground planes. What I did here though is this is where the NRF24 L01 is gonna go. I'm gonna put a female header here so I can unplug it and plug it in if I want to take it out or put in a different one. So this won't be hard soldered in, just the header will be. You can hard solder it in if you want to and you don't have to use the header. What I did here though is I leave a cutout of the ground plane because the NRF24 is going to have an antenna here. The ground plane can actually block the antenna. So I leave the ground plane out here. Here's all the jumpers that I mentioned. So I'll put you know, 2.54 millimeter pin heads here, and then there's jumpers for those, so I can reroute these pins if you, so you can reroute these pins if you don't want to use the exact connections I used, or if you want to use those digital pins for something else. Here is the capacitor, here is the footprint for either the TMP36 temperature sensor or the DS1820, and I should actually put a label for the TMP36. Here is the LM317, sort of big. Obviously, we're not going to be using a lot of power, so we don't really have to worry about power dissipation. Here's the DC input jack. Here's where you can connect the batteries. And this jumper, depending on where you connect it, basically allows you to select battery power or AC line power. Here's the reset switch. Here is the Atmega 328P chip. So you could take this chip or you can, and you can directly solder it to the board or you can put in a, uh, a solderless dip jumper so you can remove the, uh, the microcontroller if you want or not. That's, that's up to you. Here's our status LED. Here's a power LED. Here's our reset switch. This is our switch to select if we want to go into settings mode. Here's some capacitors that basically filter noise to ground. One, one of them actually is for selecting the reset from the programming pin. So these, this pin header is basically the programming pin header for programming the chip from the Arduino IDE. Here's the pins that I didn't use and this basically creates a header for you to access them easily. This is my prototyping area. So here is just going to be loose pins for you can you can solder to or pin holes I should say, and then here is actually going to be a solderless breadboard. So if you're familiar with some of my products, my shield for the NRF24, what I do here is I put two two by four female pin headers here, and I you can see I solder them all together, and it basically gives you a really small sort of solderless breadboard on the board, and this allows you to do sort of development and prototyping without having to solder. Now it's not a big area, but it's it's nice and I've, I've used it and I actually like it pretty much. Hmm, what else should I mention? Here's the holes, so if you wanna mount it. My thought for the batteries is, you know, I can connect them here and then I can put Velcro, Velcro or double side sticky on the back of this board and use that to connect my battery board to this wireless sensor node development board. So once again, I'm going to post these Eagle files to GitHub so you can leverage them and, and use them and modify them to meet whatever your needs are. Here I just wanted to give you a picture of what the current bill of materials is. So you can see a lot of the things you should know already, the temperature sensors, you can select whatever you want, but I'm not going to go through all these. We've already sort of talked about them. But this is just to give you an idea of the parts that I'm using so far. 
So keep in mind, the, the bomb could change still as I get the PCB boards and we try everything out and maybe I forgot something, maybe I made a mistake. Remember, I'm doing this in real time. But this is sort of the, the parts that I'm planning to use so far. So that's it for part four. We went over the Eagle design. So for part five, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some of these PCB boards made up. If you did see a mistake I made on the PCB board, let me know in the comments section. I'll wait a couple days before I actually order them so I can, in case I miss something. So we're going to test the new PCB boards. We'll test the temperature sensors on the PCB boards. I'll update the code for the temperature sensors. I'll do any last minute code updates and do some testing. So that's all going to be covered in part five. And, and depending on if I made a mistake in the PCB boards, we may have a part six. Once again, keep the comments coming. Thank you for watching part four, and I'll see you back for part five.